Hey, welcome back to Green Lady Permaculture. My name is Sarah, and I'm just standing out here in the garden right now, uh, right before I'm gonna go feed the ducks, the chickens, and the rabbits. I have some tasks today to get up to. Not looking forward to all of them. Um, some of what I do here is I, I do have to call at a certain age for some of the animals just to make sure that I'm raising up what is going to be appropriate to put in the freezer. So I'm not a production farm. I don't produce for other people. Occasionally my neighbors are friends, but Oregon has some odd laws on what you can sell and what you can't. I know I could probably get by on like a cottage um, rule with like chickens because you can as long as you're producing under a thousand head of chicken a year in Oregon you can pretty much produce it and sell it from your home. I, I haven't gotten to that point yet and it specifically says poultry on the page from what I've seen so I don't know if I want to push it with a rabbit because rabbit is one of those things that people are really squiggy about eating. People are a lot more accepting of chicken. Not really sure why, except for the cuteness factor. All in all, rabbit's a better meat, pro, uh, meat producer than chicken, but you don't get the eggs, so it's kind of mm. But I do have to go through because of that, and um, I'm going to call off some of the younger kits. Um, I have a person who likes to get kits that are about a pound, maybe pound and a half. I understand that the reptiles have to eat too. So, and they are very particular. Um, these ones, I only sell, sell pre-killed. So I will kill them and freeze them. Um, I prefer not to do live because I don't know if the animal is going to be put down humanely or not. If I trust the person and they have a particular method they do, or they have to do it right before for the animal to accept it, then I can understand that. So I don't have to trust the person. I only got one guy. I do that with, um, but he takes my bigger breeders that I can't myself personally. I'm like, I, I can't eat this particular one myself because I do have a couple of those and those go to those go to the snakes because I, I don't want to do it. Um, I have grown to two attached to those particular ones and everybody's going to have, there's always going to be that one animal for most people. And usually it's like once a year I get one that I'm like, I can't keep it. I can't justify it, but I like it and it's got a name and it's got a special place in my heart. So sometimes those, those end up going to somebody else who's going to take care of it for me. Most of the time though, no. So today we're going to take care of some of the kits that are going to go to a snake and um, I'm going to clear up what I have to feed to raise up for meat for us. I also might take one or two for Merlin because it's been a while since he's had fresh meat. Um, so I might take one down for him today. So we'll see. <sighs> but first gotta get everybody fed and then need to go and take care of getting the shed cleaned up. So I have a space to do this. Hey Papa, let's go get everybody fed. Okay. You want to get everybody fed? This year we have introduced the honey locust seed pods to the diet. It seems to be working really well. They really like it. Um, I actually started with giving it to um, nursing mothers and they, all the growth rates seem great. Um, we have our normal handful that are just not growing as fast as everybody else. No big deal because that's just the way it works. Eventually, um, we hope to get them over to more forage, but it is still a difficult thing on such a small property. Usually the best way to get your kids, um, just pick them up when it's time to eat and you're going to be able to catch them this way. If you're going in when they are like almost done eating or something like that, you're going to have a lot more trouble. It's a lot easier also to see them when they're all next to each other and get a better size comparison. Though some are fluffier than others, so it's hard to say when you get them on the scale.
So at this point, um, I'm bringing in a crate, and that crate has a bunch of alfalfa hay at the bottom of it. I'm just picking up the smallest kits I see and popping them in that crate. So that way I can take them into the shed where there's a little better light and it's not as cold out. It's right now it's probably about 38 degrees, so it's still chilly. Okay, so the kits are here and there's five of them in here. And um, I got them all loaded up, so we're gonna weigh them and determine gender and just give them general health checks. See, basically I wanna take out any of the ones that are growing slower than the others because those are ones that are just gonna end up having a feed issue where they're just going to be eating more and more feed. Those are the ones that usually go to reptile feeders. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, this is a baby scale. Um, this is like a scale that uh, would be recommended to a young mother who maybe had a preemie and who needs to take daily weights of her baby. So that's what I'm using here. It's really simple to use. Um, the, the digital part really won't show up on the screen for you guys, so I'll just say what it is. Okay, so if you do not want to see a kit being called or broken down for dog food, please turn this video off now. I do my best to warn and let you guys know, but this is how things work here. So please be understanding and just turn the video off now. Thank you. This one's a bigger one. These are probably Merlin foods. These are almost exactly like a perfect size for a meal for Merlin. So make sure this is turned on, has zeroed out. One point five. Okay. We're going to I you know, let me check your ears. This one's probably not gonna stay. Nothing particular about it. The frame's okay. But it's hard to really say until they hit later. Yeah, I know, I know. But we'll see. This one is a girl. Let's see if we can... That slip there, if you can see it. That's a girl. <laughs> I know, little. Um, eyes are clear. Ears are clean. Just by looking into the ears, you can tell there's no ear mites. I know, little one. You've got some good, strong claws. You can tell just by how they're moving that they are healthy and... Um, they don't seem to have any issues. The vent is clear, but let's just check gender. <clears throat> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I just want to know what our percentages are. You're so cute, unfortunately. This is why people can't do this. You're tiny. And your boy. Sorry, little guy. Can't have you in there. You would cause all sorts of drama if we didn't call at exactly eight weeks. In all honesty, it can happen a lot quicker. You know, I do. It depends on the maturity of the animal. So this one, the growth rate is just too small. Even though it's adorable, it is snake food. I know. Now, this stuns them. 
This goes through the brain in the front and stuns them. The idea is so they don't feel any pain. While they do shake and they do have muscle death and body death, they're not feeling this. Sometimes they pee. Let's, here we go again. All right, this one's a little bigger. It does have that kind of Rex thing going, but it's a bit bigger than the other one. Mm, not big enough, unless you're a girl. If you're a girl, you can stay. This is the Rex we just weighed, and it's got, you know, the, the whiskers that are slightly kinky, not straight, um, it's not, you know, this is just what happens when you mix regular Rex, and, um, you know, they're cute, it's so hard when they're this age, um, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, so, yes. This one is a boy. So let me just show you how I did that really quick. So basically, a lot of people will put them down on tables. I usually do this where, you know, kind of do the baby thing um, and then just press on either side and possibly to the top. And you can kind of pop it out and see if it's a donut at the end is a boy. If it's a taco, it's a girl. It's that simple. Um, and yes, I know people have hard times sometimes when they're this age and smaller. I can usually tell pretty reliably at about a pound. Um, like I said, I'm just using a um, feed bag. Um, just make sure that nothing gets really nasty, dirty, and they're really easy to wipe down. So I like to use these for um, when I need to do work outside on something. So particularly this kind of something. So we load this. If it will load, there we go, has to click. Okay. And I always have to do it from this angle. So I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but you don't need to see faces. This one also has a splayed leg here. It wants to come out this way. So anyway, I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Sorry, and I thank you. Here we go. So The largest one okay so the largest one we had in this bag was 1.5 so okay, and then these are going to go in the freezer laid flat and let me get the some of the air out. 
but you can let them cool first. Um, it's just one of those things that's going to take them a while to cool. So this guy is winning the race right now. He is adorable and sweet, and um, even if he is male, we are keeping him for a bit. Um, basically, he's always the one that comes up to me and is like, pet me, pick me up, you know, that kind of thing. These guys are the ones that make it hard. I didn't even pick him up to check him because I knew he was going to be the male that I was going to be keeping. And he's bigger too, which is great. And he has the Vienna marking, if you can see. I'm not really sure if you can. Um, yeah, that eye, you can see it better in. Um, he's got the blue eyes, the gray blue eyes. And I really like that on these guys. So, um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and raise him up and I hope you guys will like and subscribe. So, um, I know it's, this channel is one of those channels that it's kind of, some of the information I give is kind of squiggy. Um, just, but it's stuff that I think people need to know. And I think that we need to understand our food and where it comes from a lot more. We can't just keep putting it on, you know, in the back of our minds and we'll deal with that another day. Today is that day. It needs to be dealt with. We need to understand where our food comes from. If you're going to eat meat, do you know where it comes from? It doesn't come from the store. I guarantee you that. You're only picking it up at the store. It's going through this process first. But this process, is it a nice process? Or is it factory farming? Um, so if you are a vegan and you have a problem with me eating meat and me, you know, actually caring for the animals that I'm going to raise and consume for me, my family, my dogs, and some of my neighbors even, um, if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry, but please come back and talk to me once factory farms are done. Then we can have that discussion because veganism is not for everyone and not everybody's body can handle it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope you are taking into consideration where the food comes from that you're eating and maybe put a little more thought into what you can possibly do to be a little bit or leave a little bit less of an impact on the planet. Um, I hope you guys take that message to heart and I will yak at you later. Bye.